Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Regime to the Com video, we're going to be discussing tech news which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We'll be starting things out with Intel's Coffee Link, specifically comments from the company, who explain why that we are seeing the introduction of the Series 300 motherboards, and they also give insights into their reasons for making the Coffee Lake processors incompatible for the 200 series uh, motherboards or below. AMD will be phasing out Crossfire somewhat and instead pushing MGPU for its multi-graphics card configuration. And finally, Imagination Technologies have a company who are interested in purchasing them for takeover. But we'll start things out with Intel. So, um, one of the most frustrating things that's used frustrating for a lot of people is the fact that if you want to buy one of the six core uh, Coffee Lake processors or indeed any of the upcoming Coffee Lake CPUs you're basically screwed if you don't have a 300 series motherboard in other words you need to purchase the board for the processor to work it won't work on that's a KB Lake board now according to Intel Getting the max out of a 6-core processor requires changes to our motherboard, specifically providing improved power delivery to the, next, to the new 6-core processors. They continued by saying that we also took the opportunity to improve overclocking capabilities by improving the package power delivery to the CPU. This is another change that required uh, motherboards updated. And then finally, we increased the, mother, the memory bandwidth of the processor up to 2 1,666 megahertz, which required another improvement to the motherboard layout. Uh, basically, the long and short of it is that the new CPUs, Coffee Link, requires to be paired with a 300 series motherboard for it to work. Some people will point out that the actual socket itself, that is 1151, which of course has been around since, well, the introduction of Skylake back in 2015. Now, some people are saying, well, it's awfully convenient that this is the case. Surely you had the foresight of the roadmap to know that this would be a thing. And as I said, the actual socket itself, 1151, has been around since 2015. So many are saying, well, how come they're not saying it's 1151 V2 or something to differentiate it from the older derivative? In other words, the pin count is very similar. Unfortunately, we're never going to really know the entire truth about this unless someone managed to, to BIOS mod the 200 series uh, motherboards to be able to account or accommodate a Coffee Lake processor, which, you know, whether that's going to happen or not, I honestly don't know. It's going to be very curious, however. But regardless, I do feel that the Coffee Lake CPUs themselves are looking to be very promising from what I'm hearing, but I can definitely understand that the frustration of many customers. Next topic, and this one is a small update from yesterday. Now, I did mention that the Radeon software 17.9.2 enabled support for multi-GPU configurations of RX Vega. However, it didn't actually specifically mention Crossfire. Instead, it just said multi-GPU configurations. Now, don't forget, Crossfire is basically the equivalent of NVIDIA's SLI. It's their specific branding. But according to an interview, well, more of a quote actually with PC World, an AMD PR representative said, and I quote, Crossfire isn't mentioned because it technically refers to DirectX 11 applications. In DirectX 12, we reference multi-GPU as applications must support MGPU, whereas AMD has to create profiles for DX11. We've accordingly moved away from Crossfire tags for multi-GPU gaming. So... Essentially what they're saying, for a couple of people who have messaged me were questioning uh, what this actually means for gaming, if you've got Windows 7 or DirectX 11 and developers choose to implement this in a game, so for example, let's say a game comes out, it's DirectX 11, developers decide to push that, then nothing really is going to change. However, DirectX 12 requires the developers to really implement this, and there are multiple different methods of incorporating multi-GPU, including explicit multi-adapter, which essentially links the GPUs together. To illustrate how this works, you can essentially think of it as one big graphics card, at least according to the actual game itself. That's how it treats it. And the other one is explicit multi-adapter unlinked GPUs, which allows you to have integrated or discrete graphics cards 
Now, this was quite interesting because DirectX 12, essentially, and this is something we've actually discussed rather in depth before on the channel. I'll try to remember to link it in the video description. If not, you can search Red Gaming Tech Multi GPU and oh, DirectX 12 um, Multi GPU Red Gaming Tech, something along those lines, and it will pop up. But basically, this allows you to have a cross vendor. Uh, GPU solutions. So, for example, you can have an integrated uh, Intel GPU along with a Radeon graphics card, or you could, in theory, have uh, NVIDIA and AMD in the same rig. You get the idea. So, don't think of this as necessarily AMD abandoning uh, multi graphics card solutions. Instead, just think of it as like the company moving with the times. I wouldn't be surprised if NVIDIA are more reluctant to do this because obviously SLI is quite synonymous with the company, but even they've somewhat pushed uh, the SLI branding out of the equation to a degree. I mean, back in, let's say, the early days when, you know, they were really hammering SLI, it was like, you, you literally could not get away from it on their website or any of their branding. It was like SLI, 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 SLI. Now, yes, of course, they want you to buy multiple graphics cards, but it's nowhere near as prolific. They're pushing for it as it used to be. Finally, we're going to discuss imagination technologies. So about six months ago, the firm knew they were in trouble because Apple essentially pulled the plug with them when it came to the production of iPhone 8 GPUs. So... Apple are now manufacturing their GPUs internally for, of course, their socks, which means that an imagination technologies, while they were still profitable, nowhere near as profitable as they once were. So the UK-based firm essentially said that, well, we're going to have to be taken over by someone or another. Enter Canyon Bridge. And this is a company which is based in Silicon Valley. However, they are financially backed by a Chinese fund, Yatai Capital, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, and they have actually agreed to pay 743.2, if you can't forget the 0.2 million US dollars to acquire Imagination Technologies, which is quite an interesting development indeed. Now, Apple have said that it's taken about three years of development to make the actual GPU and the actual sock itself, which is created um, for the iPhone 8. It is known as the A11 Bionic chip. However, it's quite interesting because there's probably going to be a bit of a slap fest between Apple, Imagination Technologies, and we presume now its parent slash investor company because, well, as we all know, GPUs, when you're producing them, and there's a litany of um, different lawsuits that have gone on in, in the GPU space. You don't need me to tell you that. Um, according to Imagination Technologies themselves, I'll read out a very short quote. Apple has not prevent, presented excuse me, any evidence to substantiate its assertions that it will no longer require Imagination's technology without violating um, Imagination's patents, intellectual property, and confidential information. So... Apparently, at least according to the designers, you know, imagination, imagination technology, we're still going to be seeing them financially and legally challenge Apple because they don't believe that they should be getting away with this. They feel that somewhere or another they are breaching their patents and it's going to be very interesting to see how all of this uh, takes place. Anyway, with all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.